I just wanted to explore a little bit more about gambler's fallacy so that it will not trick you in life. It will not trick you in the kneecap. So recall that the the chances of us rolling um, you know, any three tosses in a row, and regardless of what they were, was one half times one half times one half, right? And this became one over two cubed, which was one out of eight. So the chances of me rolling any possible situations, whether it be heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, blah, 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 blah are one out of eight. So every one of these chances of these situations are one out of eight. And I think I got every single possible combination that you could get in three tosses. You know, I got some tails in there. I got all tails. I got all heads, right? And then guess how many there are? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight of them. And the chances of any one of those is one out of eight possibilities, right? Makes no difference which one it is. Um, so I all, I guess another, another way, and I was thinking about another way to see this. And I'm just going to create a situation here, and let's just say that I, you know, I'm playing a game, and in this game, in order to win the game, right, I have to roll a one or a two, and and if if I roll anything else, I lose, right? So what can I roll to lose? I can roll a three, four, a five, or a six, right? That means my chances of winning, right, are two out of six or one third and my chances of losing right have to be the opposite of that that four out of six or two thirds right so what can happen let's say in this game I'm allowed to roll the dice three times right and in let's just say that I fail all three of those times right they're all fails big F's well the chances of me getting a win is the opposite of that. So it's 100% of the time, right? Take away the chances that I fail every time, and that's my chances of success. Or actually, I shouldn't even write success. I should just write win, right? Chances I win are 100% take away fail, fail, fail. So the, the other way to see that is 1 minus failing cubed. Failing cubed, great. So, what's the chances of failing cubed? Well, failing, we said, I don't forget, let's see, what did we say? Failing was two thirds. This is an F. Let me put that in red color, right? This is an F, right? And this is, we'll just call that a W, all right? So, chances of failing cubed are one minus two third cubed, right? which is just one minus two cubed, we said was eight. Three cubed is three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, um, which amounts to, well, 27 minus eight is 19, is 19 out of 27. So the chances of me actually getting at least one win out of those three tosses, right, getting a one or a two, at least one time is 19 out of 27. Gambler's fallacy says, okay, well, if I fail on the second time, the chances that I win should be increased on the second time. I'm sorry, if I fail on the first time, the chances on the, on the second time that I win will be better. Well, let's see. If I, um, let me go back to blue. If I, if I only have two tosses, the chances that I win are going to be the opposite of the chance of me failing both times. So that's going to be the opposite of two-thirds squared. And that comes out to be one minus four-ninths which is 5 ninths, which is 15 27ths. So take this out. The chances of me winning actually went down by me losing on the first toss. And likewise, if I fail again, right, the chances of me winning are, so I failed twice in a row now, two Fs. The chances of me winning are the opposite of me failing on the last one, which is one minus two thirds, which is one third, which is nine out of 27. So they have drastically decreased by me actually failing. My chances of winning have gone down by me losing the first two times. That is the opposite of gambler's fallacy.